Councillors, the meeting is now resumed. Are there any apologies? After all that. Mr Chair, I advise that Councillor Cunningham will be absent today and I move that she be granted a leave of absence from the meeting. Seconded. It's been moved by Councillor Lander, seconded by Councillor Hutton, that Councillor Cunningham be granted a leave of absence from today's meeting. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say no. The ayes have it. I now call upon the Leader of the Opposition, Councillor Jared Cassidy, to address the Chamber. Councillor Cassidy. Thank you very much, Chair. A budget is all about priorities. Those priorities should be focused on the needs of residents and reflected by the politicians who represent them. But time after time and budget after budget, it's clear that's not the case here in City Hall under the LNP. This budget shows us one thing. The LNP Lord Mayor cares only for himself and not for the people of Brisbane. This was his chance to really show us what he's got as a leader to prove to everyone he's got what it takes to run this city and to create his legacy. But history has repeated itself, and this LNP Lord Mayor's arrogance and ego have gotten the better of him. At every chance, he's put himself before the residents of Brisbane. The decisions laid out in this budget prove to the people of Brisbane he hasn't got what it takes to be the leader this city needs or deserves. He's just not cut out for it. He's no Graham Quirk, and he's certainly no Jim Sawley. The question he should have asked himself when drafting this budget with his LNP colleagues is how can this council best spend $3.6 billion to make sure Brisbane and its residents are, uh, prosper now and for generations to come? But it's clear that question was never asked. In fact, the only question that appears to have been asked by this Lord Mayor and the LNP is how can they waste and misuse billions on poorly planned vanity projects and shameless self-promotion for political purposes. Year on year, the price residents pay for the LNP's self-indulgence goes up. Rates have doubled since the LNP took over in City Hall. And what do residents have to show for it? Cuts, delays, terminations, cost blowouts and misuse of funds a dishonourable disservice from those in charge. This LNP Lord Mayor let Brisbane down with his council budget in 2019 and in 2020, and for a third time in a row he's let the people of Brisbane down again. This coming financial year, Adrian Schrinner is reaching $90 million deeper into the pockets of Brisbane residents. Rates have gone up by an average of 3.75 per cent this year, well above inflation, and it's the biggest increase we've seen in five years. And it comes after this LNP administration already jacked up rates in January this year. So after residents have been through hell and back with COVID, this LNP Lord Mayor jacks up their rates twice in a calendar year. And he reckons this budget is for the people. What a joke. What an insult. Usually, some suburbs will see a decrease in their rates and some an increase at budget time. But this year, under Adrian Schrinner and the LNP, residents in every single suburb of Brisbane are seeing a rates increase. Only seven out of the 185 suburbs across Brisbane will see an increase that is less or equal to the city's official inflation rate. The other 178 suburbs all have to endure hikes well above inflation. And let me get this very clear for the record, Chair. This rise is paying for Adrian Schrinner's rorts. It's paying for his cost blowouts. It's paying for hundreds of offshore jobs. And it's paying for his advertising addiction. His insatiable appetite for advertising and self-promotion has had a strong influence on previous budgets, and that has not changed with this one. The LNP continue their track record of misusing public money for political purposes. $3 million spent on billboard ads, $1.6 million wasted on marketing the Metro Bendy bus project, even though not one shovel has hit the ground. After five years, this project still only exists on TV ads, glossy brochures and fly-through animations. Nearly half a million dollars has been spent on social media ads, and no longer $5.2 million 
It's now $6 million on the Living in Brisbane newsletter delivered to every Brisbane letterbox every month with the LNP Lord Mayor's face plastered all over the front cover. People wonder why their rates have doubled under the LNP and they've been getting fewer services. Well, it's because Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner is draining the budget on self-promotion. He is addicted to advertising and Brisbane residents are funding that habit. Yet again, we see another budget with no reprieve for residents. It's riddled with rorts, Chair. Despite repeated calls from the Labor opposition and residents, this LNP Lord Mayor has refused to give up his $100,000 cash allowance for another year. He has flat out rejected calls for the spending of his allowance to be tracked and audited. Allowances are supposed to be for purely uh, work-related expenses. But the only person who knows how this $100,000 is spent is this LNP Lord Mayor himself. This lack of transparency on this so-called allowance is nothing more than a cash handout from residents' pockets. <clears throat> Curbside collection is yet another service which fell victim to this LNP Lord Mayor. Adrian Schrinner's decision to cut curbside collection was met with major backlash from the community and from the Labor team. Yeah, yeah. His calls to cut this community service led to a rise in illegal dumping. We saw nearly 5,000 reports in the seven months after curbside collection was canned. Trips to the tip with residents uh, being forced to pay for fuel or ute or trailer hire, and that's only if they could afford to do so. It was clearly a bad move. More than 6,000 residents signed petitions calling for it to be reinstated. And to make it even worse, Adrian Schrinner also ordered council to revenue raise off this spike in illegal dumping. The number of fines issued increased by 300 per cent after this Lord Mayor cut curbside collection and revenue raised was up by $400,000. This is disgraceful, Chair. Most of those fines were dished out to people putting hard rubbish on the curbside after this LNP administration cut that basic service. In fact, 90 per cent of all reported illegal dumping since curbside collection was cut has been on the curbside, not in bushland like this administration likes to claim. And those are Council's own figures. Most of those residents probably didn't know or expect that their Council would cut their basic services. Well, they clearly hadn't met Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner. The Labor team and residents have been running a relentless year-long campaign to make this administration swallow its pride and swallow its arrogance and right this wrong. After now, and now after a year of shame, he's finally admitted just how wrong he got it and finally reinstated curbside collection, which is a huge win for the people of Brisbane. But it should never have come to this. It should never have come to an entire city coming together and campaigning for basic community services. Yeah, yeah. The LNP voted down reinstating curbside collection 13 times over the last 12 months. Curbside collection should never have been cut. Residents clearly suffered from that selfish decision. Brisbane streets became a dumping ground. He knows, we know, residents know, the LNP leader should never have cut uh, should have cut his multi-million dollar advertising budget instead of a vital community service, but his ego and arrogance got the better of him. It's clear community services are first in line on the chopping block under the LNP, and especially when their incompetency bill gets too big. When Adrian Schrinner cut curbside collection, it wasn't even during a budget, so we know he could cut it at any time again. We'll be watching closely and holding him to account should he make any attempts to cut that service once again. That's a promise to the people of Brisbane. And I'd like to get something else straight for the record as well, Chair. The so-called savings from curbside collection did not go towards community grants like this Lord Mayor is spinning to residents. Adrian Schrinner, in fact, cut community and building grants. In 2019-20, $7.8 million was spent on grants for clubs, organisations and businesses. In 2020-21, the year COVID hit, that dropped to $4.8 million. And that also includes the so-called COVID assistance grants, a total cut of $3 million. Despite the facts, this Lord Mayor decided to lie to Brisbane and to lie to its people. He came out claiming the money saved from cutting curbside collection 
was given to community clubs. We all know that is a lie. Councillor he not Cassidy, only cut Councillor curbside Cassidy, collection. You know that we don't use that sort of language here, so can I please ask you to, uh, I've, you've used it three times now, please cease from using um, uh, that sort of language. Councillor Cassidy, please proceed. He not only cut curbside collection, he cut community grants by $3 million as well, Chair. Adrian Schroeder and this LNP administration should hang their heads in shame. They have been nothing but deceitful and it is insulting to the people of Brisbane. They don't care about the people of Brisbane, otherwise they wouldn't deliberately mislead them. Residents have also seen cuts to their public transport at the hands of this LNP Council. The other day, the Lord Mayor said in his press conference, and I quote, if we don't get people back onto public transport and improve the services, congestion will kill Brisbane. Yet he has cut Brisbane's monohull ferry fleet by more than half after leaving them to rot for years. Shame. And he's terminated ferry services without warning and without consultation. If Brisbane residents had a dollar for every time Adrian Schrinner contradicted himself, they could afford to buy and run their own ferries. <laughs> he's so caught up in his own political spin and deceit, he doesn't know what day it is. And now we see this LNP administration is cutting more funding to public transport in this budget. Under the plan for public transport section of the budget, this LNP Lord Mayor has cut funding by almost $100,000. This program is to help plan the public transport network. Obviously not a priority for this self-absorbed Lord Mayor. You know what he didn't cut, Chair? This Lord Mayor's $100,000 cash allowance, and that comparison speaks for itself. We all know this LNP administration is now reviewing more ferry routes and more bus routes too. Public transport is called public transport for a reason. It belongs to the public and it is paid for by the public. This LNP council has no right to rip residents' transport options out from underneath them. Those decisions have added hundreds of cars to already congested roads in and out of these communities. They have taken precious time away from the lives of prison residents. A three-minute ferry ride is now an hour-long commute, all while this LNP Lord Mayor jacks up rates twice in a single year. Residents are paying more and getting less and less and less and less and less. The LNP in this council are a walking, talking contradiction. They talk a big game about buying local, but then order buses from China. Council bus manufacturing in Brisbane is now officially dead under this LNP Lord Mayor. Bus 882 just rolled off the manufacturing line at Eagle Farm. It is the last locally made bus from a partnership between Volgren and Brisbane City Council. For almost 30 years, Council has been buying Brisbane-built buses, but that meant absolutely nothing to Adrian Schrinner. He has snubbed local manufacturers and is now getting Brisbane City Council buses made in China. This is disgraceful. It's a slap in the face for Brisbane workers. This LNP Lord Mayor cares more about jobs in Beijing than he does in Brisbane. It seems he's been taking too much advice from his mentor and rock climbing buddy, Campbell Newman, who we all know ordered those trains from India while he was Premier. First it was trains from India, now it's buses from China. Campbell Newman and Adrian Schrinner are all, are all cut from the same cloth. Apart from rock climbing, their favourite pastime is sending jobs offshore. Prison workers and residents have had a gutful of Councillor Schrinner and his backwards LNP administration shipping jobs offshore. Electric bendy buses can be made right here in Brisbane, that's a fact. But under the LNP, every single bendy bus for the Brisbane Metro is being built overseas. Even playground equipment is now being shipped in from Europe. The LNP loves to snub local manufacturers and local workers, and this administration in City Hall is no different, and it's doing our city harm. Our local economy is suffering from it. We are losing local jobs, and that's all at the hands of Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner. After starving Brisbane's bus fleet of funding for three years, 
We finally see $45 million allocated to start new bus builds in 2023 in this budget. Every single cent of that money must be spent on locally made buses. Not buses from China, not buses from Europe. They need to be buses from Brisbane. And Labor will be making sure that is the case. And we will be holding this LNP administration to account if they snub any more local jobs. That's another promise to the people of Brisbane. This budget also paints a very clear picture of this LNP Lord Mayor's vision for Council's workforce. The more disposable a worker is, the better in the eyes of the LNP. For every year the LNP are in charge of City Hall, the more casualised Council's workforce becomes and the harder it is for Brisbane workers to put food on the table. Okay. Under the LNP, workers are more at risk of being exploited and underpaid. Council's in-house capabilities are more hollow than ever with Adrian Schroener in charge. Under the LNP, every basic piece of ongoing council work has to be put through a lengthy, costly procurement process. We see $150 million worth of road resurfacing being contracted out. That's almost half of all the road resurfacing now being done by labour hire workers. That's potentially $150 million worth of stable, secure, in-house jobs that could provide Brisbane workers with the rights they deserve. We saw 55 in-house IT workers sacked under this LNP administration, and their external replacements were exposed to modern-day slavery at the hands of that contractor. This all happened on the LNP's watch. Ratepayers are forking out $22 million to external law firms, even though we have 55 lawyers and paralegals working in our council team. This LNP Lord Mayor treats City Legal like a PO box. And the firms we are paying this exorbitant amount of money to are national and international firms, the likes of Clayton Oots and Minter Ellison. So much for supporting local Brisbane firms. The LNP's buy non-local policy strikes again. We're also seeing the most basic of council work being dished out to contractors. Landscaping for median strips is now being done by labour hire workers instead of permanent council workers. Footpath repairs, mowing, bus stop upgrades, all being put out to tender instead of being allocated to an in-house council team. Contracting out work creates unstable employment. Unstable employment does not support workers or their rights. It does the opposite, but that's just how the LNP like it. It also harms our local economy. The less secure someone's income is, the less able they are to support uh, spending in our community. It looks like the ducks, being the ducks of economics at high school didn't do this LNP Lord Mayor any favours, Chair. Poorly planned vanity projects also plague this budget. The cost of this LNP administration's incompetence is eye-watering. The Brisbane Metro project started out at $900 million. It's blown out by another $300 million, and not one single shovel has hit the ground. It's a $1.2 billion busway extension that's been glorified from the get-go to stroke this Lord Mayor's ego and get his face on TV. That's what happens when you rush out to announce something before an election, but fail to do your homework first. Well, two elections, in fact. Redesign after redesign, racking up eye-watering blowouts, and Brisbane residents are forced to pick up the tab once again. The only jobs supported by this project so far are those in the advertising firms who have been paid $1.6 million to spruik it. How about we call it for what it is, Chair? A busway extension. Get a local manufacturer to make articulated electric buses instead of sending those jobs off to Europe and get on with the job of running this city. Unfortunately, under the LNP, no project will ever run like that because their egos are this city's biggest roadblock. If it doesn't get publicity, Adrian Schroener won't fund it, he won't fast track it, he simply doesn't care about it. So he has to beat it up into something that's newsworthy, and we've seen that happen with the Green Bridges. In the budget, only $293 million is allocated to the Green Bridge program from now until 2025. 
There it is in black and white. The five green bridges will not be delivered in this term, if ever at all. It was just a fake election promise to get some votes and to get media all along. This Lord Mayor will continue to be deceitful to the people of Brisbane, but the numbers in this budget don't lie. And the longer they push this project out, the more cost blowouts we'll see and the more redesigns, I'm sure, as well. All to get the maximum number of news hits on it they can. This Lord Mayor's vanity is costing ratepayers big time. Along with their egos, this LNP Council also puts developers in front of residents. Oh, yes. Under this administration, we've seen just recently, 15-storey hotels go up next to small residential unit blocks and daycare centres in Spring Hill. We see character homes demolished in Tawong and Kangaroo Point. We see, we see developers riding roughshod over the community's needs and wants. And worst of all, residents are being exiled from the planning process. Residents are actively ignored by this LNP administration. They are patronised and berated when they try and speak up about development issues in their local area. LNP councillors call residents scaremongers and tell them to be careful what they wish for if they dare oppose a development. We see plans for sporting and recreational precincts forced upon local communities without any meaningful or genuine attempts to consult with residents first. You'd know a thing or two about that, Chair. This council has the money, the capacity and the person power to actively engage and consult with residents. But that's just not a priority for the LNP administration. And that's again made clear in this budget before us today. So on top of paying their rates, residents are being forced to fork out thousands of dollars of their own money and dedicate hours of their own time just to be heard by this LNP council. This LNP leadership is costing residents in so many ways, financially, mentally and their time. But this LNP Lord Mayor likes to distract from all of this with big, shiny announcements that often have nothing to do with him, like the Olympic Games. <laughs> the state and federal governments are doing all the heavy lifting. They're stumping up and investing the big bucks. But time and again, we see this LNP Lord Mayor attempting to piggyback off them without actually bringing anything to the table. He made a vague mention of $200 million for land, but we all know how Adrian Schrinner handles land deals. We only have to think back to the Sherwood bus depot saga. The only thing this Lord Mayor is truly in charge of for this Olympics is organising road closures and redirecting traffic. There is nothing of significance allocated towards the Olympics in this budget, and that's because Council's role in making Brisbane 2032 a reality is supportive. This Lord Mayor needs to quit showboating and stroking his ego and get on with running this city. If he really wants to help, what he should be doing is pumping money and resources into our community and sporting clubs. The teenagers who are playing sport at those clubs today will be our homegrown athletes for Brisbane 2032. Yeah. You may think this call from Labor was answered on the weekend when this Lord Mayor was out spruiking $50 million for clubs, but you'd be mistaken. That announcement was nothing but a rebranding of delayed projects bundled with regular maintenance works for our parks and green spaces. You see, getting on with the job doesn't get Adrian Schrinner's head on TV. So he had to rebrand regular funding for clubs and parks as some sort of big pre-Olympics pre initiative. He took Labor's idea but was too cheap and too selfish to actually fund it. The people of Brisbane see right through Scotty from marketing and they'll soon see through Adrian from advertising too. This LNP Lord Mayor needs to stay in his lane and do what local governments and local government leaders are supposed to do. Support a city from the grassroots up, but that will never happen while the LNP and their vanity is in charge. We need change. We need better for residents. We need leadership that puts Brisbane first. If Labor was handing down this budget, we would see more money dedicated to community services and more public transport services. We would be upgrading and promoting services, not cutting them. 
Curbside collection would always be the last thing on our chopping block. Residents deserve and expect their hard-earned rates to be spent on services, not self-promotion. In a Labor budget, we would see cuts to this scandalous advertising spend. This budget shouldn't be the Lord Mayor's personal promotion fund. Labor would end the misuse of public funds for political advertising. We would end the rorts. The Lord Mayor's $100,000 allowance would be spent on fixing footpaths instead. We have over 1,600 kilometres of broken and dangerous footpaths still waiting to be repaired. Under Labor, this basic community work would be a priority. A Labor budget would be delivering more in-house secure jobs to lower the bill for residents and back Brisbane workers and their rights. We would be making sure council buses were being built right here in Brisbane as they have been for decades. We would put an end to sending jobs offshore. As a local government, we need to do everything we can to support local jobs as we recover and rebuild from COVID-19. We would be making sure communities were heard and were consulted and made part of the planning process. We would be doing everything we could to support community clubs. These organisations are the lifebloods of our suburbs. This is how we make Brisbane 2032 the best it possibly can be and leave a lasting legacy that will benefit residents as well after the, uh, well after the games have gone. We certainly wouldn't be using clubs to get publicity like this Lord Mayor. Labor would be investing in the initiatives of the future to secure our economy for generations to come. Concepts like FOGO would be high on our priority list. We would be putting in place a full FOGO system today. We will be doing far more than just a pilot study. FOGO is composting, but on a citywide industrial scale, taking your kitchen food scraps and garden waste and turning them into valuable compost. It creates three times as many jobs as traditional landfill and creates a valuable revenue stream back into council. It is the single most effective thing a council can do to address dangerous climate change. It's been a massive success story in another Labor city, Penrith. It's tried and tested and it works. We should be leading the way here in Queensland, not standing around and letting others go FOGO first. You can't have a robust economy in the 21st century without investment in job-creating environmental initiatives. Instead of less and less and less, residents would be getting more and more and more. That's the Labor way. It's unfortunate, but none of this will be a reality until Labor is in charge in City Hall again. The evidence, evidence of that is before us in the budget. This budget tells a tale of misuse, mistreatment, mismanagement and mistruths. It oozes incompetency, it stinks of vanity, it's riddled with rorts and it's a slap in the face of Brisbane residents and workers. It's time we had a council that put residents and workers first. It's time we had an administration that didn't blatantly misuse the hard-earned rates of residents. It's time we stopped sending jobs offshore and supported local manufacturing. It's time this council delivered the services that residents pay for. It's time for change and Labor will be that change. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor. Uh, can I please uh, call on Councillor Allen to respond? Thank you, Mr Chair. It's a pleasure to stand here this morning in wholehearted support of the Lord Mayor Adrian Truner's 2021-2022 budget for Brisbane. A budget that provides vision. A budget will help this great city continue its recovery after COVID. A budget that will drive the city forward to reach its undoubted potential. The city of Brisbane comprises a population of some 1.2 million people and almost 130,000 businesses. It is a city that has transitioned over the years from what some would have called a big country town into one that has recently been acknowledged as one of the most livable cities in the world. 
It has a terrific array of world-class facilities, industries, recreational experiences and lifestyle options. Its capabilities and potential are most notably displayed by the high regard for the Brisbane's joint bid for the 2032 <coughs> Olympics and Paralympic Games. In the past financial year, COVID has brought significant uncertainty and the Schroener Council responded to support the wider community, including residents, businesses and community groups through rebates, fees and charges reductions and grants. But we also continue to push forward with key projects and plans. To ensure this city remains at the forefront and continues to pursue its ambitions and result in growth, we must afford it the type of budget that underpins these aspirations. An ambitious but prudent budget, one that is possible because of the solid financial platform laid over previous years. The 2021-22 budget, my third budget as chair, comes at a time when many parts of the world continue to grapple with the COVID pandemic. However, Australia has done much better than most and is now very much in the recovery phase, though effects linger in some sectors of the economy. This outlook is supported by recent economic data, including spend, GDP and employment data, indicating a return to pre-COVID levels, which is welcome news for businesses and residents alike. Even the state government in their budget on Tuesday acknowledged the improvements in economic activity, employment and general outlook. While their budget is a fiscal train wreck with deep deficit and ballooning debt, we agree with their perspective on the economic outlook. As they said, the economy is roaring back to life. With less social and economic uncertainty in the market than this time last year, the Lord Mayor has presented a budget that sustains and enhances the services that are valued and used by the residents of Brisbane. But it also goes a step further. This budget underpins strategic investment in our future. From our investment in Brisbane Metro, Green Bridges and Victoria Park, to new ferry terminals and libraries, to footpaths and bikeways, we remain committed to the future of this city and its growing base of residents. Fiscal responsibility, not austerity, has seen this Shrina Council continue to strive and deliver the very best for residents, businesses and visitors. We continue to serve you not only in the fundamental services you require, but also through investment in the growth of our city, backing our local businesses and, importantly, delivering more of what you want. Not only are we bringing neighbourhoods and suburban retail precincts back to life, we are maintaining South East Queensland's lowest minimum general rates, yeah. building new and iconic parks, ensuring residents can enjoy our libraries and pools and supporting the city's economic recovery. Again, this year we'll be fast-tracking major construction projects as we drive growth and develop the infrastructure that our growing city needs. It cannot be said often enough, Brisbane is the engine room of the greater Brisbane economy. From the CBD to the suburbs, our city plays a significant and important role for both the region and the state. To support the demands of this growing city for new infrastructure and services, Council has instituted a modest rate rise, which is equivalent to $1.20 per week for an average residential owner-occupied rate payer, or 3.75 per cent. This is after the Shrina Council delivered an effective 0.5 per cent drop in rates last year. This is well below the 6 per cent increases that were imposed on four occasions when the Labor was last in administration. Importantly, importantly, it is lower than the rate rises that have occurred following other crises. Councillor Cassidy has made some disingenuous statements today with respect to rates. Absolutely. He did not mention that we were comparing next year's rates income okay. with this year's rates income, where we have provided tens of millions of dollars of relief to the ratepayers of Brisbane. He did not mention that we provide an effective rate decrease of 0.5 per cent to average ratepayers this year to help support them. He did not mention that the average rate rise impact over this year and next year is just over 1.6 per cent. He did not mention that any additional rates income will be used to provide the services and infrastructure this growing city needs. It is as if he's only become aware of the uh, COVID pandemic and I'm not even sure he's aware of it now, but ultimately it's as if he's been in a vacuum for the last 12 months. 
He also referred, referred to inflation. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the CPI and inflation has no meaningful link to the costs that impact councils. Right. The increase in the CPI, a basket of household goods and services, does not reflect the cost of bridges, buses, city cats or road upgrades. Any linkage between rates increases and the CPI has been comprehensively dismissed by economic experts, of which, Mr. C of which Councillor Cassidy is clearly not one. Through you, Mr Chair, we aren't running a grocery shop, we are running Australia's biggest council, in Australia's best and fastest growing city. In his budget reply speech last year, Councillor Cassidy got it all wrong on rates, with most people paying less in general rates in 21, 2021 year than in the year before. He was also wrong on the surplus we included because we knew times were uncertain and we expected that surplus to reduce and that's exactly what's happened. Mr Chair, Councillor Cassidy got it wrong last year and he's got it wrong again today. This administration has continued to take a measured approach to the use of debt to fund key city enhancing infrastructure, such as the Brisbane Metro, Green Bridges and other key infrastructure. While net debt will rise modestly this year, some of this has been earmarked to fund potential Olympics related land acquisitions if required. Council continues to maintain Council continues to maintain an excellent credit rating from QTC with a strong credit rating with a neutral outlook. Our use of debt is in stark contrast to the Labor State Government, where it is literally out of control. State net debt will increase by 170 per cent over the next four years. State debt is increasing by billions and billions of dollars each year. It is just the Labor way. Before turning to some of the specific themes in the budget, it is worth noting, as was the case last year, that Councillor Cassidy had an opportunity today to lay out a comprehensive alternative vision or plan for Brisbane. <laughs> Mr Chair, as an alternative government, don't you think they would do this? In fact, the best he could come up with after the Lord Mayor's budget speech and to showcase his leadership credentials was to pull a media stunt with an old sofa outside City Hall. <laughs> truly, That's truly, ex like truly that. extraordinary. Councillors, 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 silence please. Unfortunately, Alan. unfortunately, yet again, he has failed to outline anything of substance. He has continued to criticise, but has no firm plans of his own. He talks of priorities for the city, but they are mostly a shallow selection of his favourite grievances or misconceptions, often dictated by his union overlords rather than for the benefits right. of the city. Or alternatively, they're things that this administration is already delivering. This administration continues to have a sharp focus on the priorities that the residents of Brisbane value most. It requires hard decision making in determining what can be supported and what can't. While Councillor Cassidy may not agree with our priorities, the people of Brisbane do, and that was evidenced at the ballot box just 15 months ago. We know that... Councillors, councillors, that's right. Councillors, silence, please. We know that Brisbane is much more than just the CBD. Much like a puzzle, Brisbane suburbs make up the social and economic fabric that enhances our city and makes it the best place to live, work and relax. Brisbane is a big city with a population of more than 1.2 million people living in 190 suburbs spread across 1,300 square kilometres. Because of our size, financial horsepower and capability, we are able to undertake and deliver projects that many other councils cannot. Indeed, this council, the Shrina Council, is required to deliver projects that in other states would be delivered by the state government. Accordingly, in this $3.6 billion budget, we have continued to focus on the suburbs. So much focus, in fact, that $3.1 billion, or 86 per cent of council spend, is directed at suburban projects and initiatives. Whoa. There are a vast array of projects, including road resurfacing, park upgrades, curb and channel works, festivals, sport and recreation facilities, and libraries, to name a few. Renewing suburban centres, supporting local small businesses and helping to deliver thousands of markets, festivals and events each year are just some of the ways we're making Brisbane suburbs better. 
Just one new example of our commitment to the suburbs is our Community Sport Partnership Program, which has been allocated $1.64 million in 21-22 as part of a four-year partnership program with community and sports clubs. And total capital expenditure over the four years exceeds $6.6 .6 million. Councillor Cassidy is quick to say that this administration does not invest in the suburbs, but this is just not true and has never been true, and the numbers prove it. 86% of our spend is in the suburbs. It's just a cheap, uninformed shot from the opposition seats where you don't need to do the heavy lifting required in an administration or even get the facts right. As the worst of COVID recedes and the economic recovery continues, it is critical that we continue our vision and plans to build a better Brisbane. It goes without saying that investment in our vibrant, growing city is essential and indeed an expectation of our community. It is key to the city's sustainability, growth and livability. Through the fast tracking of major projects and delivering vital infrastructure upgrades, we will deliver a stronger economy with more local jobs and supplier opportunities. We're continuing our, continuing our investment in Brisbane's economy to the tune of $1.2 billion worth of capital infrastructure in 21-22. That's investment in jobs, supplier opportunities and city growth. From the construction of major projects like the new green bridges with $6.2 million allocated, delivering sports parks with funding of $19.2 million and delivering new parks with an allocation of $15.6 million to investments in new and upgraded ferry terminals of $25.5 million. We, we, are we are demonstrating our commitment to the residents and businesses which call uh, Brisbane home. With respect to green bridges, the construction of two green bridges at Kangaroo Point and Breakfast Creek will commence with a commitment of $60.2 million in 21-22. These bridges are taking cars off the road and giving people a new way to travel. We want to make Brisbane a city that's easy to travel around by whatever mode you choose. Turning to ferry terminals, funding of $25.5 million has been provided to support construction of terminals, including South Bank Terminals 1 and 2 and the Howard Smith Wharves Ferry Terminal, to provide greater access to these world-class dining and entertaining precincts. What better way to explore Brisbane than on the 22 kilometres of the Brisbane River? To continue our investment in water-based transport, $8.3 million has been allocated in 21-22 towards construction of two new next-generation double-decker city cats. That is yet again an investment in local jobs. No discussion about building a better Brisbane would be complete without reference to the game-changing Brisbane Metro. Just have a quick drink. $218.8 million is allocated in 21-22 to continue this project, with a near-term focus on completing a program of early works, including public utility and service relocations and an intersection upgrade in South Brisbane. We'll also commence inner-city infrastructure works and complete significant procurement activities. Brisbane Metro will slash travel time for commuters, improve services and position our growing city for the future. Brisbane Metro will be a positive boost to our local economy with more than 2,600 jobs supported during construction, in addition to the direct employment opportunities, there are supplier opportunities and indirect employment outcomes. Let's not forget that Councillor Cassidy stood in this chamber last year in his budget response <coughs> speech and berated this project a project that had been delayed by his colleagues in George Street and, disappointingly, he has done it again today. Well, the project is very much up and running. Depots are being built, trial vehicles have been ordered and other elements are underway. And, Mr Chair, the Labor State Government has thrown their support behind the project too. Another embarrassing example of Councillor Cassidy's lack of judgment and politically motivated malice. Public transport continues to be a key focus for this administration, particularly as our city continues to grow. In this new financial year, we'll continue providing a public transport operating subsidy of $154.4 million. We'll continue the popular free off-peak travel for seniors on buses and ferries with an allocation of $4.2 million. 
Additionally, $3.1 million will be provided to complete an electric bus trial of four electric vehicles, which will inform, which will inform our future procurement, mo procurement model for the bus fleet. With over 5,781 kilometres of roads, no budget is complete without reference to the road network. We're continuing our commitment to $90 million per annum for road network resurfacing across the city. Importantly, we'll also be delivering significant upgrades to key suburban locations to reduce congestion and increase safety. $108.5 million has been allocated in the budget in 21-22 to improve safety and traffic flow in Indrapilly, Rochdale, Castledine, Ramson, Mount Gravatt, Wynnum West and Bracken Ridge. With reference to the Indrapilly roundabout upgrade, $27.8 million will be allocated in 21-22. The Schroener Council has unveiled the final design of the new Indrapilly overpass, which will significantly improve traffic flow and safety. $128 million has been allocated to this project from 2021 through to 23-24. Early construction works will commence in mid-2021 and provide local businesses with the opportunity to secure contracts for the build while supporting 388 jobs over the life of the project. Community facilities will also get a boost with $73.2 million on improved community facilities in our suburbs, including $1.4 million for the construction of the new library at Everton Park, $2 million for the Whitton Barracks Community Hub, $2.4 million for a new community hall in Windsor. Additional SAMs for school signs will also be provided with an allocation of $719,000. Safer paths to school will be supported with an allocation of $1.6 million. The Schroener Council's commitment to a cleaner and greener Brisbane has never wavered. The Lord Mayor's commitment in particular to a cleaner and greener Brisbane has seen key transformational projects announced in recent years, such as the Victoria Park Vision and Green Bridges. However, there is much more to our agenda. This year, we will continue to support a wide range of initiatives, including community conservation partnerships to assist groups like Creek Catchment and Habitat Brisbane with an investment of $5.2 million. There is also a four-year commitment to greener suburbs with more than $9.5 million allocated with $2.6 million in 21-22. As the Lord Mayor mentioned in his budget speech, we will establish a new Brisbane Sustainability Agency and it will play an important role in the future of our city in tackling long-term long -term sustainability challenges and investigate business opportunities in the pursuit of being an even cleaner Councilor and greener Aaron. Brisbane. There is also a significant investment in parks. Brisbane is blessed with more than 2,100 parks or a network of over 6,000 hectares. Residents right across our city should be proud of the wonderful parks and green spaces we offer. We are the envy of visitors and most other cities. Overall, there will be a $93.5 million investment in new parks, sports parks, park maintenance and improved playground facilities. For those who are particularly energetic, $221,000 has been included for the construction of three additional ninja courses. $328,000 has been allocated for the ever-popular scooter tracks. $25.76 million has been allocated for delivering iconic parks for Brisbane and includes the initial stages for the con conversion of Victoria Park from a golf course to a new urban park with an allocation of $11.3 million. $79.6 million will be invested over four years to deliver new sports parks across the city with $19.2 million in 21-22. As the Lord Mayor mentioned in his speech, curbside collection is back at a cost of $7.4 million. As mentioned in last year's budget, this was always going to be reinstated once circumstances, circumstances allowed us to do so. Accordingly, we are pleased to bring back this service 12 months earlier than planned, thanks to responsible financial management and improved economic circumstances. <laughs> Curbside collection will recommence on the 12th of July. Mr Chair, this administration continues to back Brisbane businesses and wants to make Brisbane the most business friendly city in Australia. There are approximately 130,000 businesses registered in the Brisbane local government area. They are the lifeblood of our suburbs and CBD and provide employment for approximately 70 per cent of our population. When business is strong, Brisbane is strong, 
and accordingly we will continue to invest in services and programs to support business. We will continue our village precinct projects, investing $11 million to create more vibrant neighbourhoods right across Brisbane suburbs. Over the four years, we're committing more than $40 million to village precinct projects. Investment in our suburbs has never been more critical. This program will stimulate economic activity, support local businesses, increase employment and enhance the amenity of our communities. The business hotline 133 BNE supports Brisbane's business community and economic recovery by providing a convenient single point liaison service between businesses and various areas of council. In 21-22, $1.6 million will be committed to this service. The city analytics team within economic development are enhancing our ability to make decisions based on solid data and the analysis of that data. They are charged with identifying, coordinating and optimising opportunities and initiatives to deliver and help build and sustain the growth and de development of our city. To support this important work, $2.2 million has been allocated in 21-22. We will continue to support the Brisbane Business Hub, which has captured the imagination and support of the Brisbane business community. $3.7 million will be allocated in 21-22. We will continue to provide funding to the Economic Recovery Task Force to support tactical initiatives in recognition that further responses may be needed to support the ongoing recovery. $4.2 million has been allocated in 21-22. A 50% discount will be provided on all footpath dining permit fees for the next financial year and will apply to existing and new operators at a cost to Council of $575,000. Council is also committed to our local buy program, targeting 80% of procurement spend going to local businesses. At the end of May 2021, this initiative has achieved local procurement of more than 80%, equating to an $812 million spend and supporting 3,091 South East Queensland businesses. As a significant purchase, purchaser of goods and services with an annual procurement spend of more than $1 billion, Council is supporting the region's growing industries and having a positive economic impact. We have a very thorough process for, for procurement that identifies what can be acquired locally and where we may need to look further afield to get exactly what we need. Councillor Cassidy has been ill-informed with respect to our procurement processes, but at the end of the day, our focus is always to make sure we get the best possible outcome for the residents of Brisbane. We will continue our program of paying invoices to smaller suppliers in seven days to support their cash flow. We know that backing local businesses is important and will keep our economy strong and protect jobs. The Asia Pacific City Summit will be funded again with an allocation of $708,000. The summit continues to bring business, industry and cities together to enable them to build relationships and effectively contribute to the success and sustainability of our cities into the future. It is an integral part of our economic development agenda and fosters valuable international relationships. Through the Business and Local Economy Support Project, we provide a range of services to businesses, including investigating and providing opportunities for businesses to learn new skills, engage with the broader business community and access new markets. It also opens up the opportunity to access business liaison offices and terrific facilities like the Suburban Business Hub in Nunda. And $1 million has been allocated to this in 21-22. I do not really have time to cover all the programs that are out there to support business. However, a couple of additional ones are supporting business partnerships with an allocation of $166,000, supporting suburban, suburban business with an allocation of $55,000, Better Brisbane proposals, proposals with an allocation of $182,000. Mr Chair, and yet again today, Councillor Cassidy has said little about what he would do to support the wider business community in Brisbane. He regularly stands in this chamber and denigrates businesses and our suppliers, the very businesses that employ so many of our residents. The businesses of Brisbane and their employees who rely on jobs need to know that Councillor Cassidy and his Labor team are no friends of business and show scant regard to the interests of businesses in Brisbane. In conclusion, Mr Chair, 
This budget acknowledges the challenges of the previous financial year and some of the lingering after effects. However, it is clearly focused on the future. Brisbane is a great place to live and people are voting with their feet and moving to Brisbane. We must enhance infrastructure, public transport networks and communities to support this growing population. This budget does that. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Lord Mayor, the Deputy Mayor, the Chairs, their staff and the program teams for their significant contribution to the formulation of the Lord Mayor's budget. Additionally, I would like to thank, Mike, thank Michael Kachera in the Lord Mayor's office in Tristan Beck and Julie Lago in my office. I would particularly like to thank the council team for their terrific effort in the development of this budget, including the CEO, Colin Jensen, Divisional Manager, Bill Lyon, CFO, Paul Oberly, and of course, and most importantly, the corporate finance team who do so much of the heavy lifting and who have been working on this budget for many months now. A big thank you, especially to Tanya Nish, Mark Russell, Kath Catherine Swift, and the many others who have contributed. A wonderful effort and a job very well done. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Chair, Brisbane is on the cusp of an incredible decade. This is an ambitious and targeted budget that ensures that the Shrina Council can support the exciting future and growth of this city. A budget that will make the Brisbane of tomorrow even better than the Brisbane of today. I commend the budget to the Chamber. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Councillor Allen. Uh, Lord Mayor, can I please call upon you to move a resolution to adjourn the meeting to Wednesday? Yeah, thank you, Mr Chair. I move that this meeting be adjourned until 9am on Wednesday, the 23rd of June 2021, to allow for program information sessions to be held later today and on Monday, 21st of June 2021, on the budget programs. Seconded. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by the Deputy Mayor, that this meeting be adjourned until 9am on Wednesday, the 23rd of June 2021, to allow for program information sessions to be held later today on Monday, the 21st of June. 2021 on the budget programs. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, please say no. The ayes have it. The, the meeting is adjourned. Councillors, I remind you that at 11am, future Brisbane will be in this room and infrastructure for Brisbane will be in the Balmoral room. And please sign the book as you leave. Thank you, everybody.